What's up everybody? Almost 10 p.m. I'm trying to get this thing working, but I think I broke it. What are you gonna do? Anyway, Russ with RWGResearch.com here, and this is the second video on the Zero Electric Motorcycle. Yes, I'm wearing a baseball cap. Anyway, I think I broke it. I said in my last video I wasn't gonna blow anything up yet. I think I blew it up. I was probing and something shorted out, I think. What are you gonna do about it? I'm not gonna use certain parts of this, but I need to make sure other parts of it are still okay. So I did reverse engineer everything the best I can before it blew up. I have a little bit to share with you. It's a little different than I thought, but I can't probe it now because I think I broke it. Here's the schematic. I didn't have time to write it up or you know, build it to scale or anything. I'll show you this at the end a little closer. But real quick, what I wanted to show you what I got on the bench here is I got one row of batteries. I have the motor controller, I have the key, I have the dead man switch, um, I have the black box with all the stuff hanging out, I've got the battery management system, and there's a lot going on here, but one of the really interesting things is I can't seem to find any CAN bus communication and this little cord seems to be doing something with voltage and not CAN bus so I'm very confused right now and again I broke some stuff so ah it is what it is but let's get a little closer I'll explain to you what I'm doing and I'll show you some cool stuff such as the BMS is actually working I'll show you how I see that and uh, a few other details so let me get you a little closer alright before we go too much further Let's just take a moment to enjoy the absolute chaos that my bench is right now. I mean, you know, if my mom walked in right now, she'd probably be like, are you serious? And I'd be like, yeah, but my mom's not here. <laughs> uh, it looks a little crazy, doesn't it? Okay, so let me show you what we got. We basically got the battery management system connected the way that I showed you in my schematic last time okay and then we got all that tied to all the wire harnessed and I will show you this in the schematic towards the end here but I, the, the one interesting thing I found out is all of the parts for the um, low voltage 12 voltage side is all completely isolated through that DC DC converter that is right there so this little black box does nothing but control uh, the system as far as the motor controller and the battery stuff. So let me show you real quick. I've got each one of these wires tied to each one of these um, batteries. I've got 14 of them just like you're supposed to in series. Right now we're sitting at about 52.4 volts. Um, I am charging them right now with about one amp of current. Actually about 80 milliamps of current. Um, no, yeah, something like that. Anyway, and um, so I'm going to turn this on. The key does actually work the way it always should. You got the key switch and the dead man switch. They're in series. Again, I'll show you the schematic at the end because some of you may not care. And it may not help me explaining this. So I turned it on. Took a second. It kicked on. I don't know if you can see the LED on the controller. It's right here. It's flashing red three times. Now it didn't do that previously, but now it does it. And that's because uh, the error code is that this didn't go to zero before it went to full throttle, which is actually where it's at right now. I think I shorted something out. Hopefully it didn't damage the controller. We'll test that at the end. But let me do that again in silence so you can hear what happens. So you can hear a few things clicking as it starts up. Now, we'll look at the signals on the oscilloscope real quick, um, just for your reference. I'm on these two wires that go to the battery management uh, system and go to here. So you've got the green and the yellow are tied to this, and then there's a pin that goes to the battery charger plug, and it's on the blue. So green and yellow are in this plug, and the blue uh, is on that external plug that goes to the charger so I want to turn this on this is going to be kind of hard to see because um, 
Actually, let me... Oh, no, they are all about the same. There we go. I'm going to change the division on the green to 50, just so we can see all three of them. Actually, you know what? I'll just offset it a little bit. That would probably be wiser. There you go. So I'll offset it a little bit so you can see it. Now what I'm going to do is turn the key on. Sorry, off. Key is now off. So you can see everything's pretty well at zero. All the signals. I turn the key on. The yellow one goes and then the green one goes to uh, basically battery voltage. So that's not a CAN bus connection like I thought. Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no CAN connection back to the BMS, which is very interesting. I, I was for sure that was CAN just because of the way it's set up, but maybe that board's meant for something else on CAN because I can't find any CAN signals going anywhere. Although I didn't try to really find them until after I broke the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something that's pretty cool. So this light is on when things are on and when there is a problem it flashes an error code. So this goes to the throttle. I'm going to yank the throttle cable and you can see one, two, three, four. We get a four error code. Plug it back in. Code goes away. Unplugging this battery cable, um, this little two wire connector we get a error code of, I believe it's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. So I plug it back in. It's all fine and dandy, seems to work. Um, when I did that, I will do it again. I'm gonna unplug the throttle. Okay, I get an error code, but nothing happens on those signal wires. Now if I unplug that battery management cable again, you can see we get one of those wires drops out down to zero. The other one stays high. When I plug it back in, it comes back. So that wire right there is sending a signal to enable everything and, and the battery is okay. Now I couldn't find, um, there's LEDs on this board right here, but they don't light up and they may have disabled that just to save on battery power there's no reason to have them to be fair unless you really need to activate them for testing purposes so the only other way I found that I can test if the battery management system is working is measure the voltages of each cell and it does seem to work now when I yank one of these wires off watch what happens we get an error code the error code is again 8 so if I put it back that basically means we lost a cell on our loop which is bad turn everything off so if we wait a second it will do its job and recover so that's how I know the BMS is working even though there's no indicators of anything and the voltages are balancing while I'm charging um, so that's kind of interesting and when that happens um, Again, I will just pull the wire off one of the batteries and we can see when it registers one of the wires drops to low. If I put it back, it will come back. It'll take a minute, but it'll come back. So um, beyond that, um, before I broke it, um, I was actually able to measure what's going to this motor controller. Um, and what was going to this motor controller was interesting. It wasn't a PWM signal that I could tell, although I don't have a motor connected and things do act a little differently when you have the motor connected versus not. Like right now it's actually sitting at 20 volts um, on my meter, 28 volts right now, even though there's nothing connected. The uh, meter actually did go up to the proper voltage when I gave it throttle and that actually worked. Right before I broke it, I took a few measurements of what's happening on these two cables according to these high, low, and uh, speed settings. And what it was, was it was the difference uh, was the curve when it was ramping up. Now, I'm going to guess that that would actually limit the voltage. So this is supposed to be a 0 to 5K potentiometer, and what they have here is a, uh, a way 
to vary the voltage which pretends like it's the throttle and this is a, a 0 to 5k by the way and so what happens in the end is um, it changes the ramp so how fast it goes from 0 to full throttle so when I give it full throttle it ramped up and then it was at maximum so I'm gonna guess it just limits the voltage it doesn't do a PWM but I still don't know how they're doing the torque because that is a rating of current and this only has this input so I'm still not sure how that works and I'll probably never know because I think I broke the throttle which is why this is giving me an error code unfortunately that's what happens now real quick just to test that the motor controller still is happy I'm gonna take this 0 to 5k bypass all of this junk and plug it right into where the throttle was supposed to be and just make sure that it's still operating correctly alright so as a quick test I bypassed the uh, throttle by jumpering it out because this is basically zero ohms when it's at zero so I can just jumper this guy out and I took the throttle cable here and plugged it right into my controller and you can't see this but the little green light right there is on and working and so it is happy and you probably also can't see that meter but when you throttle it it does what you would expect it to do and throttles so that's good the motor controller is still safe even though I probably busted that board so let's move on okay so here is the schematic that I drew out now I'm not gonna waste your time and tell you exactly how everything works because that would just be kind of silly but I'll go through a little bit of it basically everything that's here is isolated by this DC DC converter and everything that is here is uh, the stuff I've been showing you on the bench all of this over here is just the standard motorcycle 12 volt system this has not been modified in any way that I can tell um, the turn throttle light uh, switch that's right here this little guy is that connector right there and it happens to be on the back of my sheet so in case you're wondering this is what's inside of the throttle There's a couple of switches right to do all the turns and stuff so that's that this is actually what the uh, what's on that board so there's the plug here uh, there's a resistor pack there is a TL2660 an op amp um, this is the CAN bus it's a VP230 so it's, a, it's an actual CAN bus transceiver like I say I'm not 100% sure why they even have it maybe it's for a different version bike it's kind of interesting to me that, that, that I thought that they were using that, but apparently not so much. There's a PIC, 16-bit um, microcontroller. Then on the top there's three relays, all your plugs, and then there are uh, two 5-volt regulators. These are pretty cool because they go from 4-volt to 80-volt input, and they'll regulate 5-volt out. So that's pretty unique. And there's a little resistor there. So back to this diagram, again, you have your standard... Um, not anything important um, schematic here which is just your headlight your horn your turn signals your headlamps your tail lights uh, the brake uh, light on the back of the tail light there's two LEDs there's the blue and then it looks like there's white shining down for the license plate and I'm gonna guess the white one goes to this blue which was not connected and the red one goes uh, off here to the uh, uh, the brake it looks like I'm sorry the turn signal the way I've got this drawn no I'm sorry it goes up here to power into ground so it's always on that's what it looks like so this looks like tail lights always on I haven't looked at this real close I spend like as much time as I could as fast as I could drawing this up and I haven't really studied it terribly so that's everything on this side of the DC DC converter the stuff that I've been playing with here again very straightforward You've got this 20 pin connector on the back of the black box that is the control for the uh, motorcycle beyond this uh, is where you get these components and how that all works is it's a black box so good luck with that there's a plug that goes to a relay that turns on the dc dc con uh, voltage converter power right so there's just a relay for that and they've just got an external um, connector connector for that then you've got your motor controller, you've got your few wires for the key on, throttle 1, throttle 2. Um, then you've got your motor battery, 
sorry, your motor, your battery, and your motor controller connected up with the solenoid that's mounted right on the front of it to turn the main power on and off. There's a diode across that coil, so there's no, uh, it's called the flyback diode, so there's no uh, high voltage coming back the wrong way and damaging electronics. And then up here, you've basically got all of this stuff in series. You've got the kill switch, which is the single switch that's mounted on the bike, not the full throttle. Um, so, this one. This is the kill switch. So, basically, you've just got the kill switch, you've got it going through a fuse, you've got it going through the key switch, and it comes back and goes to a connector here, and then you have the throttle. So, it's it's really straightforward. Everything really, truly happens right here in this black box controller that I have apparently now broken, which is not a real big deal because I didn't plan on using it anyway. But I was really, really curious of how they were doing the torque and voltage, but we'll never find out. Hey, what's up? So, I'm entering this little piece of footage because I thought about this and I actually think I got just enough data before I broke this thing in order to make some sense out of it. So, when I looked at the traces, one was ramped up nice and slow, but it went up to a maximum. The other one was real fast and up to a maximum. Now, I would think that if you hit the speed selector switch, that one would be about half the top voltage is the other one in the ramp up for the torque speed settings. However, I think what's actually going on, I'm recording this on a different device, so sorry if it's a little shaky, but I think what's going on is actually it's not truly the torque, it's more of the time it takes for the ramp up of the acceleration to happen. Um, the top out torque is probably the same in both instances, it just feels like it's different because the ramp is different. So that makes a lot of sense. And the other thing is I think I might have been measuring it a little weird, and so uh, that or I didn't check it with the other switch setting differently. I can't remember because I broke it and I don't remember, but I do remember and I do know that if you actually set the settings where it's half speed it would ramp up only to half of the maximum value because it's being controlled digitally so basically that 0 to 5k ohm uh, throttle would only be a half throttle versus a full throttle to get half the speed or wherever that's calibrated for half speed so that makes a little more sense so yeah I guess that does make a lot of sense and it would be kind of fun to put a setting similar to that on the new system because if you wanted to save battery it would be like efficiency mode where it would gradually take off and that would be set with a ramp. I could actually do that with a microprocessor or I could just do it with an analog uh, LRC or an RC, I should say, charge ramp uh, capacitive circuit. So we'll, we'll think about that. Anyway, so I guess we do actually know how it works. It's that difference in ramps and how long it takes and then where the maximum value is that changes the torque, the top speed, and uh, yeah, back to the rest of this video. So the VMS, it does work, and it can be used for stuff. Um, it could be used for a, a, a battery bank that I build out of these batteries that are not um, a full pack for the motorcycle, but maybe for a power wall or something. Again, this is just to balance the cells and make sure that none of the cells go bad. And if it, they do, they'll send a signal out through our little connector cable right here, and we can determine what happened, or basically power down the system because we got a battery problem. Okay, well, um, yeah, this is like totally terribly dangerous. I'm using magnets and short cables and extensions to connect the BMS just to get stuff tested. And apparently I broke the little black box and so we'll never truly figure out how the current and the um, speed were regulated in order to do torque. But that's okay. I don't plan on using it. So now off to the races on finishing my own battery pack, building it into this box making up my own little controller. This neat little uh, indicator might still be able to be used. Um, it's kind of cool. I think it just gives it a voltage and it's got a bunch of transistors on it um, and it basically just registers where you're at and it does fade the LEDs on and off so that's kind of cool. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward circuit. Probably replicate that or 
build something different. We'll see. If I use a microcontroller of some kind, then, you know, I can actually just do that electronically and uh, not have to worry about all these extra electronics. Uh, or digitally, I should say. So, yeah, that's the end of this video. This is number two on this project. If you missed the last project, I went through the entire bike of a factory 2009 flagship MX Zero electric motorcycle. And I tore it apart and I showed you all the components, showed you how the battery was built. So if you haven't watched that, go check it out. But other than that, Russ out. We'll see you in uh, many weeks, I'm sure, because it's going to take me some, uh, some good amount of time to do the rest of this. I've only actually worked on this about three days uh, after, you know, in, in the evening. So six to eight hours of work total on this project. And I'm imagining it's going to take a lot more to do what I want. So we'll see. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, problems. You think they'll let me bring this on an airplane? No, probably not. Anyway, love you guys. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Read the Bible more as always. God bless. See ya. Oh, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Just put it in a box and sell it to the neighbor. Okay, okay. You win. Those of you still watching, you know I couldn't resist. I totally have this motor connected by this stupid thin, very, very, very bad idea cable. And we're gonna see if it works. Ready? Yeah. That's just on that single row of batteries, too. That's hilarious. All right, let me show you the the battery. Let's see if you can see the battery voltage there. Is that an all right? That's an all right shot. This is the motor voltage. So I'm measuring across the output. Uh, really, I should be measuring uh, from here to here. There we go. This should actually be the voltage out. Let's see what happens. That's actually really good considering. Can you guys see the, uh, the little LEDs right there? Watch, I'll try to get out of your way. Watch them strip down. <laughs> Full throttle. It's pretty good considering they're on this little string of batteries. Let me throttle it slowly again. I kind of wonder what the current is. Let's see if we can measure it real quick. It's definitely not got the right amount of current. Not the right amount of power coming out of there. I could tell. It's like limiting, limiting it very bad. That's cool though. We bypassed the black box, basically bypassed everything and the motor controller and motor works so that gives me high hope that we can do exactly what we wish to do look at these thin little cables this is such a terrible idea I'm gonna guess this meter is not gonna like what I'm about to do to it this meter is unhappy let me grab a different one. Oh, I just knocked everything off the bench that's enough fun for tonight I'm going to strip this all down so nothing uh, explodes. <laughs> Thanks for hanging around. God bless you guys. See you.